effective as in being a heel uh, with the no responses of the crowd and the no t-shirts and uh, the crowd really trying to get on his nerves. And now with him going back to being a fan favorite with this no gimmick, uh, it's fantastic for Daniel Bryan. And in the future, I think we're going to see Daniel Bryan go on to hold either the WWE Championship or the World Heavyweight Championship for a second or a third time. Daniel Bryan uh, definitely is gaining a tremendous reputation for himself. It goes along fantastic with his already impressive resume of uh, wrestling all over the world uh, in Ring of Honor and on the Independence and achieving such a phenomenal reputation for himself. He has a world title reign, a Money in the Bank contract under his belt, uh, and a tag team title now, uh, which goes fantastic with previous titles he's won, like the United States Championship, which of course was his first major championship. I hope we get at least a five to six month reign out of Kane and Daniel Bryan as your tag team champions and see them feud with various different tag teams that are already in fruition in WWE's tag team division and tag teams that are going to be created and formed because of what Kane and Daniel Bryan are going to be doing uh, to the tag team division. I go back to commentary that was provided by former co-holder of the tag team titles Kofi Kingston on a recent edition of Monday Night Raw. He alluded to the fact in commentary that himself and our truth as tag team champions were setting the WWE tag team division on fire. The question is, were our truth and Kofi Kingston really setting the tag team division on fire, or was it because of contributions of teams like Kane and Daniel Bryan and the primetime players and other teams that would take maybe months and months and months and months and months to run back through uh, setting the tag team division on fire? Was it entirely? all up to, da uh, to Daniel Bryan and Kane and R-Truth and Kofi Kingston to set the tag team division on fire, or was it various teams? I don't think uh, Kane and Daniel Bryan uh, or R-Truth and Kofi Kingston were the reason why uh, the tag team division was being set on fire. You had so many incredible tag teams that weren't even being given a chance. I mean, Epico and Primo uh, were tag team champions for a very short time, and they were a great team. Uh, and then you go back in the 80s and you saw Demolition and uh, the Legion of Doom and the Heart Foundation contribute to the tag team division more effectively than any team uh, to come in the future after the Heart Foundation's run and the Legion of Doom's run and Demolition's run finished up. Um, teams of the past and some of the more recent teams like Epico and Primo and Air Boom, of course, Evan Bourne and Kofi Kingston, uh, contributed to the tag team division more effectively than just two tag teams. Uh, but Kane and Daniel Bryan, I think, now as tag team champions, certainly will be setting the tag team division on fire. Um, R-Truth and uh, Kofi Kingston as tag team champions, when they started playing up to the idea of Little Jimmy uh, being their invisible manager, so to speak, uh, I kind of lost interest in Kofi Kingston and R-Truth very quickly, and it seemed as if Kofi Kingston himself uh, was losing interest in his character because it didn't seem like he was really enjoying uh, believing in the idea of our truth having imaginary friend. Um, I can't imagine seeing our truth as the WWE champion representing that title by having an imaginary manager slash friend. Uh, so that's obviously why WWE tried to push him as one half of the tag team champions. It didn't work for me. It probably didn't work for a lot of wrestling fans, and a lot of wrestling fans were finding it very difficult, I would imagine, getting used to R-Truth holding one half of the tag team titles with this imaginary friend, Little Jimmy, who we have yet to see uh, make an appearance on WWE television that we probably never will. It's beyond me why they didn't hire a 13-year-old kid or a 12-year-old kid or an 11-year-old kid or a 10-year-old kid uh, to play the role of Little Jimmy. Uh, they made the decision for some reason to have him be an invisible person, uh, which I never understood the ethnic behind. So. Um, I, I really wasn't a fan of our truth and Kofi Kingston as tag team champions, so at least it's a bit of a reprieve seeing Kane and Daniel Bryan now as your tag team champions. Not to mention it's a, a fantastic way to promote Halloween coming up over the next several weeks. I hope they keep Kane and Daniel Bryan as your tag team champions beyond Halloween. Uh, it's great. It's got that Halloween type theme and presence about it. And I love it. And like I said, you know, Kane is no stranger to holding tag team titles with various tag team partners in the past, like Sean Waltman, uh, The Big Show, The Undertaker. He's done it before. He's been there with uh, various tag team partners. So Daniel Bryan, 
Uh, the biggest thing for Kane to do is get used to teaming with Daniel Bryan because they've never teamed together before. Uh, it's only of recency they've been teaming together. So once the novelty wears off, I think Kane and Daniel Bryan are going to get uh, into their own rhythm, uh, into their own element, and just uh, continue racking up victories over some of WWE's top teams, who I believe right now are definitely the likes of uh, Darren Young and Titus O'Neil, who are future guaranteed tag team champions. It's just not now, it's just not the time uh, to put the tag team titles on Darren Young and Titus O'Neil. They are racking up victories. They were impressive on NXT, and they're equally as impressive on both Raw and SmackDown. I think that uh, it's just about time for Darren Young and Titus O'Neil, and right now it's not the appropriate time. Uh, the circumstances are not uh, legitimate, and uh, when they finally are, once WWE reaches the point of having enough confidence in Darren Young and Titus O'Neil as tag team champions, that's when we'll see them potentially knock off uh, Hell No or another team who are holding the titles by the time prime time players uh, get a chance at the titles and the time is right. I think the biggest variable. Uh, with Darren Young and Titus O'Neil right now not holding the tag team titles is the fact that the time isn't right and it would be just too quick almost to give the tag team titles to Darren Young and Titus O'Neil. They're just too new. Uh, they're jockeying for position right now as top contenders uh, to the tag team titles and could potentially receive a tag team title opportunity at the up-and-coming Hell in a Cell pay-per-view on the 28th of October. Uh, that's the most likely scenario I see Kane and Daniel Bryan and the primetime players heading in. Uh, over the last several weeks, we've seen our truth and Kofi Kingston feud uh, with the primetime players' matches that go back as far as SummerSlam back when Kane and Daniel Bryan were going one-on-one. -on -one. But I had this conversation with someone a few days ago about Kane and Daniel Bryan and their position uh, within the WWE, and we both came to the conclusion uh, that WWE as a corporation didn't spend months and months and months uh, building up Kane and Daniel Bryan to have them lose uh, the tag team titles about a month after acquisiting the titles. So we're going to see Kane and Daniel Bryan potentially defeat whoever the top contenders become out of this tag team tournament that's currently going on and continue to hold the titles up until at least uh, a five month period deficit and then they're going to lose the titles probably by uh, the Elimination Chamber or WrestleMania, and I think there is where we're going to see uh, Darren Young and Tuttle Sunil hold the tag team titles and change uh, the complexion of the tag team division entirely in the WWE. No team will ever reach um, the status of a Demolition or a Legion of Doom or a Heart Foundation ever again, um, because it took those teams years to solidify themselves as some of the top teams in the industry. Demolition have one of the longest running tag team uh, title reigns in WWE history of some like 300 to 400 days or something like that. I don't think Kane and Daniel Bryan are ever going to amount uh, to the status of a demolition. I've spoken to both members of demolition. They themselves would agree to something like that just judging from their personalities. I've also spoken to some of the top teams of the 80s and 90s. Uh, such as Strength Force, and I'm sure they would agree with the same thing. Kane and Daniel Bryan will never amount to the status of a Strike Force or a Legion of Doom. And if Strike Force ever took on Kane and Daniel Bryan, uh, Strike Force would make them look like an embarrassment um, because of the technical paralysis of teams like Strike Force and the Heart Foundation, especially um, because of the uh, respect they had earned after years of competing and the WWE as singles competitors and then eventually forming a team to go on to capture uh, the tag team titles. The feud between Strike Force and Demolition is a feud I'll never forget. Uh, when Demolition wore heels and Strike Force were on top of the WWE, we're never going to see a feud like that between the primetime players and uh, Kofi Kingston and our truth or hell no, the primetime players and Kofi Kingston and our truth in the way of a three-way. We're never going to see that type of 80s tag team wrestling solidified within uh, the WWE ever again, and that upsets me uh, because I enjoyed 80s tag team wrestling because that decade uh, was dominated by some of the top singles wrestlers and tag team wrestlers uh, in the WWE. We're never going to get to that era again or relive uh, that era ever again. Even in WCW, uh, they had some fantastic teams like Harlem Heat, uh, which were a great team, and they had various tag team combinations you were never thought would come into fruition especially during the WCW versus NWO era back in the mid-90s. Um, 
So I think that, uh, you know, the reason why uh, interest in tag team wrestling has gone away, it's because we want to see, you know, retro tag team wrestling brought back. Uh, but we have to realize that the times have changed, and as wrestling fans, we have to change with the times, no matter if we want to or not. Uh, those were comments that were dropped um, by Vince McMahon for the Greatest Wrestling Managers of the 80s DVD when he said, you know, as a wrestling industry, the times have changed, and we have to change with the times, no matter if we want to or not. And those are comments that I kind of keep going back to all the time. You know, some comments you might not pay much attention to, but if you actually take time to put into fruition some of the comments that have been made, especially for DVD documentations of teams like the Legion of Doom, uh, which had a Life and Death DVD produced many years ago, uh, and the Heart Foundation and Demolition, if you actually take these comments into uh, you know fruition, uh, you'll come to the realization that these comments are quite legitimate and quite realistic. You know, the times have changed, especially um, the business has changed. Uh, with the times, and especially tag team wrestling has changed because we're seeing more younger uh, teams coming to the WWE looking for a position and looking for some kind of solidification. Uh, and I think that uh, Kane and Daniel Bryan are going to assist in solidifying young teams like Epic and Primo, like the primetime players, and over the next five months it's going to be crucial